let's get started, shall we? I'm gonna hop right into it. I'm gonna remind everybody right now before we get started that this video is going to be filled with opinions. I've been wanting to make this video for a while and I've got a good amount of videos where I test ride bikes and I still have more to come, even further this year. But I kinda wanted to make a quick list of like my top favorite bikes that I've ridden this year. And I want you guys to know that these Op these are opinions based on my own by my own whatever the fuck goes on up here just based off of my own experience and they're not meant to shit on your favorite bike or your bike or anybody else's bike they're just opinions and I'm sorry if your, your bike didn't make the cut I really am I'm really not so without further ado let's get into my top favorite bikes that I rode this year on camera now when I made this list I had to think about the bikes that I own like so naturally the bikes that I own would be on this list, but I decided not to put my bikes on this list. Otherwise, I'd be like, yeah, the Ninja H2, the DRZ, those are obviously my top favorite bikes to ride. So I've excluded bikes that I own, and I've only made a list comprised of bikes that I rode on camera. And I'll link you to those individual reviews if, you, if you're new to the channel or whatever. My name's Dan, by the way. I sometimes make YouTube videos that are okay. Number five on this list, as far as bikes that I've ridden this year, is the ZX14. Now, a lot of you guys are gonna be like, Dan, the ZX14, didn't you love that bike? Why is it number five? Yeah, I absolutely love that bike. As a matter of fact, it was about this close to being picked over the H2. And the only reason it made number five is based on a couple of my own personal preferences. Obviously, I'm small, petite, as some of you guys would call it, the world's most jack midget lesbian. So the ZX14 is a big bike for me. If you're a bigger guy, you can handle this bike a little bit better, and it's long. It's a long bike. Didn't feel like I had enough room in my garage <clears throat> to keep it in the garage. Does that make sense? I just felt the bike was too big for me personally, but I still loved it. It had tons of power. It was very smooth. It was comfortable to ride, even for some as short as me. I had a very fun time riding this bike and I could definitely see myself doing really long trips on that bike. As a matter of fact, if I was a taller young lady like myself, I could totally see myself riding this bike for long periods of time, enjoying it, modding it, maybe putting a turbo kit on it, smacking a couple H2s around, who knows? But I think it's probably the least pleasant to look at. <clears throat> it's the most inconvenient, but it's still fun and it's still very fast. I enjoyed this bike a lot. So that's why I made number five. Number four. This meant four. This is also probably gonna surprise you guys, but the DL1000, the V-Strom, it's got the same engine as the SV1000. It's a Suzuki, which is, you know, I mean, it's kind of gay, but it's a sport touring bike and it's big. It's a tall bike. But here's the thing that this bike was so much fucking fun to ride. It wheelied, it was had plenty of power, it sounded good, it was super comfortable. I do around the US tour, I wanted to be on a DL1000. It was just so well balanced that even a short guy like myself could handle it no problem. Oh, but Dan, you didn't even review a BMW 1200. That's the first sport touring bike you've ever made a video about. Wow, Dan didn't mention my specific bike? Fuck you. Hey, ignore the green screen, by the way, and the new setup. This is actually the same house, it's just rotated differently. I got the green screen for streaming on Twitch, so feel free to add whatever uh, shit you want in the background. I don't care if it's dicks. But the DL1000 was, was tons of fun. It was actually like, Instantly fun for me to ride. I had plenty of power. I said it was comfortable. I could easily ride this bike across the across the U.S. No problem. That's kind of what I plan on doing with this bike. Shh, it's a it's a future it's a future project. Shh, people can't know about it just yet. I plan on doing some some more bigger upright touring bike. I'd even like to get a gold wing underneath my belt once. But I, I feel like that bike is all around. If I had one bike to choose from, if I could only have one motorcycle, that would be it. Number three. I don't think this will surprise anybody. I had an absolute blasty blast when I compared these three bikes. The FC07 is easily my third favorite bike that I've ridden this year. It's super lightweight. It's good on fuel economy. Insurance is, shut up. I'm doing a video. Insurance is cheap. It's got tons of power when it's done right. It's super fun to ride. God, it's like, it's like riding a more powerful <laughs> DRZ or the WR4, whatever, go fuck yourself. But for real though, this bike was an absolute blast to ride. And one of the words I kept using in the review was forgiving. Let me tell you something that didn't make it on the video. I was getting cocky. I may have done a wheelie, sat it down, came around a corner kind of fast. And then there was traffic at a stoplight, locked up the brakes and went in between a bunch of cars. Was totally fine. Could never have done that on another bike. You guys weren't there, but like the situation, uh, it's a cool bike. I think that there's a lot of people out there who refuse to move away from sport bike categories that like, if it's not a super sport, they don't want to be on it because they're dumb. For real, there's a lot of people out there who don't want to experience anything else other than just like fast. But I beg you to at least give like an FZ07 a try. It'll be one of the most fun riding experiences you've ever had if you're a decent rider, or even if you suck ass at riding, you'll just really enjoy the bike. It's actually comical how fun it is to ride. We're already on number two. This video is going by fast because I'm talking a lot of shit. This one was hard because it's between the last first and second place bikes. And I had to think about this really hard. If I had to choose between these two bikes, I would definitely choose a runner up. And I've talked about it a ton on the channel as of lately. And that's the V-Rod. Oh my God. 
I never thought that I would get behind a Harley so hard as the V-Rod. And that's probably because it's not really a Harley. A lot of people talk shit on the V-Rod that are hardcore Harley fans because it's not a Harley. Because it's reliable and fast and water-cooled and doesn't leak oil. You know, shit that Harley people don't like. It's such a weird bike, right? Because the gas tank isn't really the gas tank, it's more or less just an airbox cover, kind of like the Buell. And the actual gas tank is underneath your seat. It's long, God is it long. It feels way longer than the ZX-14. But the sound and the power, oh my god. Oh my god. Let me channel my inner chase on two wieners here. Oh my god. Uh, y'all? It's crazy how powerful that platform is for being a smaller, is this bothering you guys? For being a smaller displacement Harley. Around 1200 cc's, a little 1250, somewhere around there. And a lot of you guys are probably saying, 1200 cc's, that's small? Again, for a Harley it is. Harley's like number one selling platform right now is the 117 cubic inch, it's ridiculous. That's like 1900 cc's for all those non-Harley fanboys. But the power and the joy and like the feeling and the styling of this bike, it really doesn't get much better for me than this, this particular bike. As a matter of fact, I really don't want another bike outside of this. The Harley V-Rod, or specifically the Night Rod, actually. It's the same bike, it's just got different controls and it's painted different, but Harley discontinued it, so finding him's gonna probably be a pain in the ass soon. I know I talked about this bike so much, and I wanted this to be number one, but I couldn't in good faith put it as number one just because I like it, you know? The list is kind of like, it's like, hey, look, look at the bikes that I like. But really, like, one of the things that really make this bike so good for me is that I can ride it comfortably, it's got plenty of power, it's absolutely sexy to look at, ah, but it's a Harley. Actually, fuck it. That's what Harley should be making. I can't wait for the new bikes. But I couldn't put it as number one just because I really, really want one. I don't think it deserves the number one place. And here it is. Can I get a drum roll? Alright, fine, fuck it. The most fun and enjoyable bike that I rode this year was the R9T. Yeah, I'm just as surprised as you guys. But that bike was probably the most pure experience I've had when riding a motorcycle at all. I really, really kind of wanted to put an electric bike on this list just because, but it's not there yet for me. Give me two or three more years when the prices come down and they have a little bit longer of a mileage range, we'll talk. The R9T was probably the most enjoyable experience I've ever had riding a motorcycle to date. It's certainly not the fastest bike in the world. It's got the, the flat two or the boxer engine, pistons jet out the side. If you lay it down, you're definitely gonna blow your engine up. The styling, the feel, the sound, the energy that that bike has, it's just, it's absolutely pure. And I've never been able to find a bike that kind of makes me feel the same way is when I was riding that bike, you know? It's designed in such a way that's really attractive, it's a comfortable riding position, but it's really cool. And I felt bad because I talked a little bit of shit on it because I called it the hipster of motorcycles. One thing hipsters are really good at doing is finding like, diamonds in the rough, you know? Not to suck millennials dicks or anything like that. Don't get me wrong, if that bike was a person, it would have a man bun, it would ask you for your craft beer selection, it'd probably wear a lot of flannel, and have a beard with a lot of that beard oil shit in it. I'm sorry Boris on bikes, this is not directed at you. <laughs> but for real though, it's one of the most enjoyable bikes I've ever ridden, and I haven't really been able to figure out why other than the fact that it's just kind of a a different type of bike. It just sounds good, it's got a great feel to it, and it feels like one of those like minimal bikes, you know, that you can just enjoy riding, that I really wanted one after I rode one. And the only reason that I didn't buy one is because I just didn't feel like I needed to, right? Like I've got a bike for every other purpose. If I wanna do hooligan shit, I'll ride the DRZ. If I wanna go fast, I'll ride the H2. And if I wanna look cool, I'll ride the Magna. And I just felt like, I didn't need that bike. And that's what it is, it's a bike that you don't need. It's the bike that you want, but you don't need. You know, maybe when I have a bigger garage and then I can kind of afford to have seven different bikes that I don't need, <laughs> I'll have one for my collection. But God, I love that bike. I think that's easily the most fun and clean and pure bike that I've ever ridden. And I would recommend everyone who wants to get into something a little different than what they're at to at least check them out, you know? Kind of gay for it, actually. Not to mention that it's actually a pretty cool looking bike. You know, I hate to admit it because I hate to give Germans any sort of credit, you know, BMW and all that. They talk so much shit on American made products that I don't want to be like, oh, well, German makes a good product. You know, I can't tell you how many times people talk shit on my Camaro versus their BMWs. I got to give credit where credit is due. The BMW motorcycle division did a great job with the R9T and I would love to own one one day. I just don't need it right now, you know what I'm saying? Is that respectable? It feels respectable. So that kind of ends our list at the top five motorcycles that I've ridden this year on camera. Ugh. But before I go, I wanna show you guys something cool that only my American viewers are gonna really care about, but do you see these? You know what this is? These are AK-47 magazines, except they're gold, right? 
When I got the GTR, I talked about gold plating my AK in April, I believe. It's coming. Very soon, I promise. It should be done hopefully next week. And then I'll go to North Carolina where my buddy, the AK guy, assembles stuff. And we're going to assemble it and do a video with it. But these are the magazines. It's all being done and it'll be done very soon, I promise. They look absolutely amazing and I cannot wait to like put bullets in them and shoot them out of a gun that's at gold as well. Anyway guys, that's my video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I often like to do these sit down and talk videos. If you like it, uh, I don't know, if I get, what, if I get like, if I get 12 likes on this video, I will eat a banana. I'll eat a banana, so that's it. Go home. Is this what you want? This awkward? Okay, that's what, that's what we're gonna do.